Hello everyone and welcome to the semi-final team builder. Your New York and Polion have made it this far. We're in the final four, but we've got a lot of work left to do if we want to be the final one. Now we have a heck of a matchup this week against the British Brooksish. Not only do we have a heck of a matchup, but when you are watching this video, I am in Los Angeles. I'm across the country right now. So this battle is going to be kind of frantic because I had to build this team very, very quickly, but I really hope that this team performs like I think it will. It is going to be one of those weeks where it either performs beautifully or fails spectacularly. There's really no middle ground right now. As I was team building with my friend Joe, there was a discussion about how this team can either just nail it and everything's gonna go up to plan and it's gonna be perfect, or it's just gonna fail in a glorious explosion of a loss for me in the semifinal. So, uh, his team is Cartana, Excadrill, Florges, Rotom, Wash, Galvantula, Chandelure, Gallade, Skuntank, Alolan, Raticate, Muck, and Mega Blastoise. Now his team, we've seen it before. In fact, last time I predicted it perfectly what he was going to bring, and I have very little reason to suspect he'll bring anything different this time. He's got the Galvantula for speed control, he's got the Cartana, which almost outspeeds my Latias. He did run Scarf last time I faced him, so I expect him to potentially do that again. He may expect me to go Trick Room like I did the first time very successfully. I am not running Trick Room this week, so if he does expect that, then I hope he uh, has EV'd his stuff to underspeed certain things of mine so that I always outspeed him. That would be great. Uh, if I don't see the Galvantula because he's expecting the Trick Room, that would be fantastic. Now, Marowak is back. Marowak, Bone Meringue, Flamethrower, Knockoff, and Substitute. You know it's coming back. It's David. I gotta do it one more time. I gotta get it in a match for real this time. Uh, last time it wasn't that friendly at the end, but this time it's... I'm gonna click it if I can. In the second time I faced David in Week 8, there was a chance that Marowak could have killed Kartana had it had Flamethrower. That opportunity arose, and I wish that I had it, and so now I'm just gonna make sure I do have it. Now, this is my lead. If I see him with a Galvantula on his team, I'm leading Marowak. There is no two ways about it. I cannot let him set up that sticky web for free and keep Galvantula alive. Bone Meringue Oko's Galvantula as long as it connects, and it will break the sash and then hit it a second time. So I need to make sure that his Galvantula dies if he does decide to set up sticky webs because I'm not running Trick Room and I can't let that get off. Additionally, if he does have the Galvantula, but I think he's going to switch out or something into the Rotom Wash to take the Bone Meringue, I can easily click Substitute. This Marowak is actually EV'd to survive an Energy Ball from a timid Galvantula, with enough HP to get a sub up. So it's got 236 HP and 20 special defense investment. That allows it to survive a uh, energy ball from a Galvantula that is a modest nature, or a timid nature, and still be able to put a sub up. So I do have a pretty free sub, but I don't want to be able to let him get the sticky web up and then switch out. So Boomerang is my move if, he sees, if I see the Galvantula. If I don't see the Rotom Wash, I'm going to assume the Chandelure is going to be Air Balloon. That's the only other thing that would be off the ground. It could be Excadrill, but something's got to be in an Air Balloon after that. Otherwise, if I don't see the Rotom Wash, Bone Meringue does so much work against this team, and I'm so excited for it. So, Bone Meringue, Flamethrower, Knockoff, Substitute. This thing is max, eight, max attack. It is going to be a Brave Nature with zero speed. Just in case he decides to run some crazy Trick Room thing, um, I do want to make sure that I do underspeed him. He does have the Florges. Um, he does have a Chandelure that could set it up if he wants to try and run a counter Trick Room team. Uh, like, if I'm going to set up Trick Room, he sets it up so that it doesn't get set up. I don't know. But that is the Marowak set. Gold, the Lucario's coming back. We haven't brought Lucario in a couple of weeks, but Lucario is going to be rocking the Ghost DMZ. Inner focus this week because we are running a special Lucario. The last time I ran special Lucario was that week 5 matchup against the British Bruxes. He might be expecting it. But this time we're going to run Shadow Ball with the Ghost DMZ, Vacuum Wave, Nasty Plot, and Magnet Rise. Yup, this thing is going to be a lot of fun or it's going to fail gloriously. Um, it has 244 speed and a Timid Nature, which allows it to outspeed Excadrill every single time, and it outspeeds every single thing on his team except Kartana and Galvantula. Kartana, I'm not worried about. He brings in the Kartana, Vacuum Wave. It Oko's Kartana. It's a priority move, so it doesn't really matter. Galvantula is not something I want to switch this thing in on. Uh, it just kind of doesn't do a very good job against Galvantula. Now, Shadow Ball with the Ghost DMZ, Oko's Chandelure, Oko's Gallade. Um, it does so much damage to a Mega Blastoise. If he does bring that, it does so much damage to Rotom Wash that I just couldn't justify not having the Ghost DMZ on this thing. If I do get the Nasty Plot up, then Shadow Ball doesn't even need the Ghost DMZ, but if I have it, I can take out something like a Florges. So, um, that's really big. What I really want this thing to do is be able to come in on the Excadrill that I've confirmed is not Scarfed. Scarf Cadrill is terrifying. Absolutely, absolutely horrifying. I do not want to see Scarf Cadrill this week. Um, 
I don't want to see Scarf Chandelure either, but I really don't want to see Scarf Excadrill. So, um, I want to make sure that thing's not Scarf. As soon as I can confirm that Excadrill's not Scarf, whether it's Air Balloon, whether it's um, Assault Vest or something else, um, if I, or Focus Sash, or whatever it is, if I can confirm it's not Scarf, then I can bring this thing in safely on it, as long as the sticky webs aren't up. I outspeed it, I click Magnet Rise, and then he can't even 2-hit KO me with anything, which allows me to get a free Nasty Plot up, and then Vacuum Wave. Um, vacuum Wave after Nasty Plot will Oko his Excadrill. So that's what I want this thing to do. However, if he is Scarfed Excadrill, this thing could absolutely fail gloriously. Um, vacuum Wave could do about 50%, and then this thing dies. Um, that's, what it, that's what it looks like right now. Next up, we have Mega Venusaur Plutosaur, uh, the furthest planet, and I believe it's a planet. You can ask a scientist, but I believe it's a planet. Um, and we are as far away from normal as we possibly can be. We are running a mixed offensive Venusaur with IVs and everything. Uh, 244 HP, 36 attack, 124 uh, defense, 4 special attack, 100 special defense with a relaxed nature. Allows this thing to take hits from everything. Um, there's all sorts of calcs I did for this thing to take random hits from various things. Hidden Power Fire is teched for the Kartana because this thing is a pretty safe switch into Kartana as long as he doesn't have Psycho Cut. And even if he does have Psycho Cut, with that, with that uh, spread, I do actually take two Psycho Cuts. Um, Earthquake hits Excadrill super hard, it hits Chandelure super hard. Power Whip is for the Rotom Wash, for the Mega Blastoise. So I do have answers for most of the stuff on his team. This is not really a classic uh, wall Mega Venusaur, it's more of a tank, but it is my defensive Pokemon this week, and I do have to make sure I keep it healthy. Synthesis is the only healing move I have, despite my team having a notoriously good healing ability. So we're going to see how this goes. Again, this is going to be one of those weeks where either things are going to go right or they're going to go horribly wrong. Now, next up, we have Ina. Ina is going to be rocking Draco Meteor, Defog, Hidden Power Fire, and Reflect. It's going to hold the Choice Scarf. Yes, Reflect and Defog with the Choice Scarf. Choice Scarf Latias with a timid nature max speed allows to outspeed the Scarf Kartana every time. This means I can switch it on anything once the Galvantula goes down and get rid of the Sticky Webs. I do not want to see Sticky Webs this week. That cost me the Week 8 match, and I just don't want to see him this week. So we are going to make sure that we get rid of him this week. I had nothing I needed on this thing except for uh, Hidden Power Fire for the Kartana, and Draco Meteor um, hits everything to the floor just ridiculously hard. So it's just a, it's just a nuke. Um, Choice Scarf Draco Meteor can really come in and just nuke something. It's my one decent way of handling a Scarf Excadrill, because I do outspeed it, but I can't just switch into it. Now, I do have a, as much uh, special attack as I could possibly invest while still uh, EVing myself to survive a Earthquake from an Excadrill, uh, from a Life Orb Excadrill. So, the 100 HP EVs were to survive an Earthquake from a Life Orb Excadrill. So, that's what I'm trying to do, and then I can click Draco Meteor and put a huge dent in it. Um, and theoretically, if he's life orb, then I have speed, I click Draco, he hits me, I survive, he, I hit Draco again, and then he dies, even though I'm at minus two. So, again, Excadrill, absolutely terrifying, but I think I do have a couple of answers to it in this thing and in the Skarmory coming up. Now, next up we have Hothead. Hothead, the Electivire, is going to be holding the Expert Belt, Earthquake, Fire Punch, Wild Charge, and Quick Attack. It has 52 HP, 252 um attack and 204 speed. The 204 speed with a jolly nature allows it to outspeed, like I said before, non-scarf Excadrill. It outspeeds everything on his team except for Galvantula and Kartana, just like the Lucario. And this thing puts an, a huge dent in everything with that Expert Belt. Um, Earthquake there for the Chandelure, it's there for the Excadrill. Fire Punch for the Kartana does Oko the Kartana with Expert Belt. Um, Wild Charge puts a huge dent into things like Rotom Wash and Florges and Skuntank. And so that's uh, Earthquake obviously better against Skuntank. Wild Charge will hit Gallade, I uh, put Mega Blastoise, so we do have this thing here to be a wall breaker. Um, max attack, despite not having max, uh, despite not having an admin nature, should still be able to put in a lot of work, and just some HP EVs because. Now, the last Pokemon on the team is Harmless the Skarmory with the Rocky Helmet, Brave Bird, Defog, Iron Head, and Stealth Rock. Like I said, I don't want to see Sticky Webs, and if Latios, for whatever reason, can't get the job done, if he's in there with an extra drill that I know is Choice Scarf or something, and I just want to switch into the list of Skarmory, I can Defog safely and get rid of the Sticky Webs. This thing also has Defog. I have not run Defog, I don't think, once this season, and now I'm running it on two different Pokemon at the same time. Brave Bird um, hits the... Galvantula, it hits the Gallade, it actually Oko's Gallade, even though I have no attack investment, which is super cool. Uh, does a number of Kartana, and Iron Head is there specifically for the Florges because I have no other dedicated answer to the Florges. I don't think he'll bring it, 
because Mega Venusaur is a decent switch into it. Gardevoir can handle the floor just okay. Lucario normally would be running some sort of steel type move, and if it's physically offensive, it would be really good. So I don't expect the floor just, but if he does bring it, Skarmory does a really good job of handling it. Skarmory's gonna be running 252 HP, 252 defense with an impish nature, just to get that extra bulk against things like the Kartana and Excreal. This thing is to designed to handle physical attackers of any kind. Skuntank, Muck, Radicate Alola, Gallade, Kartana, Excadrill. Nothing else. Florges, sort of. Nothing else. I do not want to see it matched up against Rotom Wash, Galvantula, Chandelure, or Mega Blastoise, ever. If it is, I've probably lost the match. This thing needs to be able to handle physical attackers. That's why it's rocking the Rocky Helmet, and it has no form of recovery. That is sort of important, and I need to make sure I keep it healthy, because I don't actually have Roost on it this week. But I do have the Stealth Rock to try to wear down some of his team. If I don't see the Galvantula, um, I might lead with this thing just to put up Stealth Rocks right away. He may lead with the Rotom Wash to counter it, and that's fine. Again, if I don't see the Galvantula, I don't need this thing as much because I don't need the Defog, and I'll put the Stealth Rocks up, I'll break Sashes, and I'll be able to chip away at his team as he switches around. So that's the team this week. Again, this is the semi-final match. This is it. We have one chance to make it to the finals here, and if we don't make it, we have to wait until the end of next season and re-qualify through all of the tough battles ahead. David went 8-2 this season. I went 8-2 this season. We're 1-1 one one against each other. This is the rubber match. I will see you guys tomorrow. I hope everyone stays well. Until then, I am freaking out, if you couldn't tell by how fast I was talking. I hope this team doesn't fail gloriously, but if it does, we had a great run this season. I really appreciate everyone coming out to the TBL and supporting the New York Empoleon. Until tomorrow, though, take care, everybody.